Getting ready for a fundraiser at the radio station today. I got up at three, got everything ready to go. Got my dress slacks on. I could wear the same shirt. I wore shorts today. Sister said, it's time to go to church. I said, and I had my shoes, my dress shoes, my socks all laid out. Left them at home. Just, just what happened. So I tried Sister Schaefer's shoes. They were white. They weren't quite long enough, though. So uh, I said, no, I can't wear them things. So we only have about an hour and a half sleep So in a couple of days. So anyone just pretty tired right now. And then we've done pretty good. Thanks, everybody, for helping out at the radio, whatever they do, and all the work y'all do around here as well. I do want to talk to you about superstition. I want to talk about superstition part two. So why do we want to talk about superstition for? The reason I want to talk to you about superstition is because when we start to take people through deliverance, and that's coming up, when's that coming up? That's coming up, in, coming up Friday. A week from Friday, it's coming up a week from Friday. The things that's getting ready to happen is that we are getting ready to take, a, take some people through deliverance. And you'd be surprised at how many people that are of the Christian faith that are still in bondage to superstition. So with that being in mind, we're going to, talk, we're going to discuss a few of those superstitions here tonight. And we're going to get ready to, to enlighten you on a few things that maybe we need to do ourselves. Amen. Father, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your blessings. And as we come together tonight, Lord, I bind Jezebel. I bind the operation of Jezebel in Jesus' name. Father, I ask you, Lord, to be with us, Father, to help us to do what we need to do here tonight. Lord, we bind the strong man in Jesus' name. And it, that's in any person here, any spirit that came in this place, not of God. We bind it, loose it to the four corners of the property. Lord, we thank you, for, Father, for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says... All right, so listen, I want to talk to you about um, superstition. But let me tell you about this one thing about loosening to the four corners of the property. So I told you all about last year having a couple of squirrels in my, in my house up in the attic. And got them all out of there. I, I bought one of those trail cams. I set that trail cam right there by that hole. That, and they cut a hole in your I don't know if you know this or not. Right in the very flat top of your roof. They'll cut a hole that big around. Go in and out of your house. I didn't realize that. And so they put one in the front, one in the back. So I put my little camera up there. I'm watching that camera, right? Got a little card on it. Make sure there ain't nothing going in and out. So after I was sure that there was nothing going in and out of them holes, then I'd cover them up. So I knew that was, they weren't activating those holes anymore. I looked back this year. I looked around there. And there's a hole right next to the one I just covered up in there. I said, man, them demons have done come back. Huh? I'm telling you what, you ever get squirrels? They're like demons. These things are hard to get rid of. You start finding out about what do you need to do to get rid of squirrels, it's something else. Somebody shout amen. And then once I, so let me tell you the story. So I sent off and got my own cage. I got me a cage. I said, uh -huh, they, they done messed with the wrong man, these squirrels there. So I set that squirrel, I set that cage up there baited it with peanut butter on that thing there two days got one i said all right i got me a little squirrel run out there pick that squirrel up i said now what am i going to do with him got to get rid of him so i started reading up about it and it says you got to now see look at this here what happens what do you do when you're going to release a squirrel what do you do so let's just let's just take that right now and just say you got a squirrel, you got a hole, now you got the squirrel, what are you going to do with a squirrel? You got him in a cage, what are you going to do with him? Okay, I'm going to go kill him. No, you're not going to kill him, but you, gotta, you can't kill a demon. Right? Can't, this is a little demon. So here's what you got to do. You got to take that squirrel, and you got to take him to the four corners of your property. And you got to release him. I bind you and loose you to the four corners of the property in Jesus' name. But here's what they said. Now, this is, it. this is what is so good about studying this kind of stuff, because if you don't know what to do about superstitions, then you absolutely just don't know. 
So when I ask you about superstitions, what should you do? And what are they? And how do you handle them? You go, well, I don't know. That's the same thing with a squirrel. This thing's real. So how do you handle getting rid of a squirrel? And what do you do? So you go and you start searching to educate yourself on what you need to do to make sure that this thing don't come back. Same thing with superstition. Y'all see the parallel yet? Because if you don't know, if you don't know, then next thing you know, you're going to be right back into bondage just like you were before. So here's what it says. It says, so I, so I read, um, quick reading, right? Five, till you take the squirrel five miles away from your property. I said, all right, let's see, where's five miles at? I go, I think I live five miles from the church. Mm -hmm. And that's the only property that God's given me authority over. So I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to bind them and loose them to the four corners of the property. Huh? So I come here and I slide myself up here and I go right back there in the back. Get right there. At the, that's all right, y'all. It's, it's, it's a squirrel. Come on. They, that's what you do with them. I didn't run a tire. I didn't run over them with a tire. I didn't bash his little head. I didn't bring him home with little crumbs of bread. Then I squished his little head. I didn't do none of that. I took him to the woods and I turned him loose and I let him go. Then I started realizing, man, did I do this thing right or not? Then I realized, man, you know, you can go to jail for doing this. Did you know that you, <laughs> the way that they got this thing all written, you can't even catch a squirrel. And if you catch a squirrel, you can't get rid of the squirrel. Did you know you got to take care of this thing the rest of your life? I said, now this is, this is a demon here. So anyway, I, pay, I posted a little Facebook of me catching the squirrel. And then I realized, man, I can go, somebody might see this and turn me in. So I erased it off of Facebook. Then I let the squirrel go out here, right? So we're sneaking up here to let the squirrel go. And just about the time I open up that trap to let the squirrel go, somebody pulls up behind us in the field. Right in the field, they pull up behind us. And there's Jason Hicks going, hey, pastor, what are you doing here? I said, man, I can't even let a squirrel go without getting caught. You know, you know what I'm saying? So then I go home and I read the rest of the paragraph. So I was quick reading how far do you take it away? It says take them five miles away, but the best thing to do is take them ten miles away. Huh? So I didn't read the rest of the book. I didn't read the rest of the part article. So now I get a phone call today that, you know, Papa, you got a squirrel back there in the cage again. You got one in the cage and one's watching the one that's in the cage. I said, man, where do these things are coming from? You can't get rid of these things. Somebody shout amen. That's almost like superstitions. Once you start down the road with these superstitions, how many of them are we doing? And then how do you get rid of these things? Actually, what are, what's all going on with the superstition? So when you look at superstitions, let's talk about that for a moment. We talked about charms last time. So let's just talk about a few things about superstitions here. So if you read horoscopes, Hesitate to walk under ladders, carry a lucky charm, avoid stepping on cracks. We dealt with a bow to idols, consult tarot cards, get nervous on Friday the 13th, or mutter old wives' tales to yourself. This article, this teaching, this right here can set you free if that's what you're doing. So super, what is superstition? Now watch this here. Superstition is the belief in magic. And things that cannot be explained by reason. That's what superstition is. So what's the Christian view of superstition? When you look at the, the, the number of Christians that still hold to superstitions. And they, sum, they submit themselves to demonic influence. So what you want to do is what God wants to do is free. You know, you can't free others until you free yourself. You can try, but you, you next thing you know, they'll be listening to you about why are they... Why are they concerned about all these things themselves? I thought they were supposed to be free. And do you know, you realize that there are unsafe people that are in the world watching you with your superstitions and they know that you're in bondage to superstitions that they know there's not even real or so, so to think. That makes sense what I'm saying? They know that you're supposed to be a Christian. You're not supposed to be in bondage to those things. So when you look at this here, when a person gets saved, just say they are a Buddhist. When they get saved and they try to leave from the way that they have always acted uh, when they were around people, that you can see that when they, when they place their hands in front of somebody and they pay homage, you know, you ever seen that? 
they pay homage to them and they do like that there. What they're doing when that they are paying homage to evil spirits and different gods that they have done since they were children. And when they become Christians, guess what? It's difficult for them to break. What has been sown into them to stop that back giving bowing homage to evil spirits and they know they're gods, it's demons, spirits, and they're paying homage to all those different gods. You see what I mean? And people who are Christians, now the reason why I'm saying this here is that they know that it's difficult to get these people to stop. Why? This is not hard. Why is it hard for them to stop? Even though they're Christians. Y'all help me out. They're in bondage to what? A spirit that's still in control of their actions and that they need to break that wrong teaching. You see what I mean? And if, if there's a spirit there, they need to be set free from it. And here's, here's what it is. That if they're not set free from it, then they go right back into the things that they were in bondage to. See what I'm getting at? And Christian pastors, they're not going to say anything about it. And you will say, it's just their culture. It's just the way that they've been raised. And you just really don't understand them. And I'll say this here, no, you don't really understand what you're dealing with. Because none of that is something that we should be continuing to do. Somebody shout amen. So they've been indoctrinated from birth to honor and worship idols. And when they repent, that reflex action of them stopping that, they have made a real sincere commitment to Christ. But it's hard for them, the new convert, to not walk past one of those idols for fear of something bad happening to them. Do you see what I'm talking about? For something fear of something bad happening to them. Now we look, well, that's just people over there in the Middle East, you know, they're Buddhists over there. They don't really know Jesus. Oh, yeah, well, demons are demons in whatever culture that they're in. And they morph into our culture as well, into the United States. Somebody shout amen. So when you look at a lot of these different things, that there are uh, people, there are, are different villages that are across the Middle East or that are in uh, Haiti or in these different countries that have, or Africa, I right? specifically say it's Africa, and that whole continent there, that they have uh, a shaman. They have a shaman that actually is over that. To rewrite, you have to realize, you got to realize that a lot, a lot of our ancestors come from what continents? These ones we're talking about. Does that make sense? So when we're talking about this here, that what they do is that they honor the shamans. They will honor the local spirits that are over a certain village. I want to keep it small, a small village. And what they do, that they've created things and locations that are around the villages so that, yeah, that looks wild, doesn't it? That's a female too, isn't it? Wow. Local spirits related to creating such locations such as mountains. There'll be a, a mountain that is a sacred mountain or certain rocks that you're not supposed to go around or rivers and uh, or there'll be termite hills or things like this here. Shamans do this here in each village to perform demonic ceremonies to do things like this here. Protect their flocks. So they do this here. Now listen here. I want you to know is that when they are doing this, here's the mindset of most Western Christians, that they're doing it ignorantly because nothing happens. That's what the Western mindset says, that they are doing that ignorantly, and we all really know that they, they ain't really nothing there, is it? But they know that if they don't do this, that they have bad luck and that there are demonic things that happens to them because they haven't honored those demonic spirits that are there in that region. They know it's real. You don't know it's real. And that's okay. 
just because you don't know what's real. And the thing is that they know it is, but they don't know how to get rid of it. You say it doesn't even exist. That's how messed up our cultures have come, isn't it? So they do ceremonies to protect the flock. And some, and when we talk about some have genuine demonic power that they make, the, and as they go along, that they hold that demonic power over the leaders that are of the village as well. So what happens is that when people come to Christ, get saved, we send missionaries over there. First of all, missionaries don't believe in this. They don't believe in deliverance, that, and they don't believe that once these people get saved, that they can have any problem like that. Does that make sense? So let me just tell you, let me just tell you one story here that goes, is that there was a missionary that, that was sent to one of these areas here in Africa, and it was a uh, Christian church who sent these people there, and they said that they were going to go there and help set people free, establish the church, minister to the people there. And what happens is they said that what they was going to do is that they would go on a fast. They were going to do a three-day fast, just water, go three days. And then all of a sudden when they said they're going to start their fast, they are there in that village. And they're doing their thing, working around. They, come, they become deathly sick. They become very sick. And so sick that, you know, if you don't have food... You know how this, the headache starts to throb and all these kind of things, you know, and that's what people tell me. They say, Pastor, I can't fast because I get headaches. So don't we all? That's a normal thing. That's how, uh, that's how unnormal that you have done fasting. It's a normal thing, especially at about the third day. It's really, you get a headache. Somebody shouts, especially if you don't drink any water. So... They're there, first day, it starts on them. Second day, the headaches get worse. Third day, they are sick. And what they decided to do is that they said, we've got to eat something because these headaches have become so terrible on us. So they popped open some cans there, got it all warmed up, sat down. And right when they took the spoon and put the food to their mouth, the, there was a knock at the door. And at the door was the local witch doctor. That was over the tribe. And it said, when they went to the door, he was there and he says, my power is stronger than your power. You were trying to fast and couldn't. And my power broke your fast. See, that's what they know how strong fasting can do against them. This is a real battle that people are in, in these things. That doesn't, you don't have to be in Africa to experience what I just told you. You can experience that in just your everyday fast. That something will cause you to break that because I got a little headache. You know, I might, I might, I might have to go to the mall today, and I just don't know if I can walk by that Chinese restaurant there. Huh? You know what I'm talking about? He knows how to break your fast. That's just what he was doing with them. He knows exactly what to do. Somebody shout amen. So he knows that. So what happens is that when they start to evangelize these villages and teach them, then and when they come in, they teach them what they need to do. They need to go in there and they need to burn their idols, their charms, their spirit shells, their potions, their magic, and, and all that magic dust. And when they sincerely repent, it's a joy but they know that there is an evil demon power in its real, and they lived under that demon power for many years of their life. They know it's real. And they've been in bondage to superstitions. And when you look at being in bondage to superstitions, many are in bondage to charms and idols and talismans. And many of them look at some of the things that they carry as being good luck charms, knowing that it keeps uh, that demons will, can, can, you know, be set, they can be, they can be protected from these demons. But now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share some things with you tonight that I dare say you heard anybody in church talk about it. But it falls on me. Somebody shout amen. So God's word is explicit about avoiding anything to do with spirits, spirits, fortune tellers, demonic tools. 
He tells us in Deuteronomy 7 and 26, Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house. Look at it. You got that in Deuteronomy 7 and 26. I got to make sure I do this and nobody says he taught all night and didn't use the Bible. Look at it right here. Deuteronomy 7 and 26. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed, cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly detest it. And thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. So you can bring an accursed thing into your house. And many people have cursed things that are in their house. So a man and a woman that hath a familiar spirit or a wizard, uh, according to Leviticus 20 and 27, he says that they should be, surely that they should be put to death. There are people that are in the Aiken area, That they have a familiar spirit. And if they were in the Old Testament times, we would find them and guess what we would do? We'd put them to death. That would be what they would do. So, and the Bible talks about, in the soul that turneth after such a familiar spirit and after wizard, it's Leviticus 20 and verse 6, to go a whoring after them. He said, I will even set my face against the soul and will cut him off from among his people. So here's the thing that you understand what God has to say about a lot of these things. So sinners love to have some kind of a token or a charm or an enchantment to carry with them for the protection that they hope that they're going to get. God will protect me. Something's going to protect me. I'm going to have good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have good luck. So a, a one of the popular forms of this is having a colored precious stone, a rock disc, it have a hole in it, and would have a, a string put through it, and then they would wear this amulet, this, 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 this thing, it would be, or it would be a necklace or a wristband that they would wear to protect them. Now, I'm getting ready to share with you some things, I'm getting ready, this is what they believe. So I guess I can get to the point of this here, is that when you have to be very careful, and we have to be careful, I'm not saying wearing these wristbands that we have that are rubber, that has, a, that has a scripture on them and stuff like that. I want you to make sure that you absolutely understand there's no power in that wristband. And there's no power in the words that are written on that wristband. Unless you give it life. And once you give it life, then you've done the same thing that these people have done. And you start to look at that, this is my protector if I have this. You start to give that object life and strength. Dr. Finn, am I doing all right? Because what has happened, what we have to realize what's happened is that their culture, their beliefs start to work into our culture and will work into the most current things that are going on around us. Pastor, you understand, Murdoch? You understand what we're talking about? So these things is what I'm sharing with you is I'm going to get to the point where you have to be very careful as Christians, not to fall into and let the culture or even the Christian things that we have on us be anything that could be of a talisman, anything like that. I don't say there's nothing wrong with jewelry. There's nothing wrong with the wristbands. You see what I'm getting at? With the right perspective of it. But when you start to ward something to it and give it power, then that's where we're supposed to... T so when we talk about this here, that nominal Christians... A lot of people would cherish a cross, and especially one that has a crucifix with Christ on the cross. They will wear that because of good luck. They will say, "This is going to give me good luck." This you got to realize this is this is this is something that uh, is going to protect me. The, the, and you see what I mean? If that's your mindset, that's who I'm talking to right now. But if you're wearing it for the purposes of wearing it. First of all, Jesus isn't on the cross. And another thing is that you have to be very careful. So what would happen is that in the day, when you look back at what we see from certain Christian beliefs and certain denominations or faiths, you will find that a lot, wearing a lot of these things would be equated to nothing but idolatry itself of wearing these things. Does that make sense? So when we look at when we look at a lot of this here, 
you'll find out that, that it's something that you need to be careful of that we don't get suckered into believing their strength and power in something that we're wearing. Now, here's something that, here's something, here's something I want to tell you about on this here is that, that there is a, I'm, trying to, I'm going to think of the name here in just a moment. Misfit covenant. That's it. It's the misfit covenant. In your scriptures, in the book of Genesis, it talks about a covenant made between Abraham, between, um, I think it was Jacob and Laban. I think it was between those two. And it's called the Misfit Covenant. And that covenant was made so that they thought that they were, you know, that as one was escaping, that the other one was after him because he had stolen, his wife had stolen some gods. And he was afraid. I'm not talking about Esau, but he was afraid. So when they came, finally came together, I'm trying to help you here in a moment. I'm trying to show you in the scriptures that you don't mess the two up. That when they came together is that they had a covenant that they made between each other. And here's what they said. Is that I, my land will only be this far. Your land will only be this far. And I will not come past that land. I will not come past this. And you will not come past this. Yeah, this is in your Bible. Y'all know that, right? Will not come past it. And they made a covenant right there. They actually sacrificed over that, crossed between the covenant, and made a covenant called the Misfit Covenant. Now, and that was just something that they did between themselves. Now, during World War, during World War I, they had a medallion that they made. You can look this up on your internet right now. You look at all your stuff up. Called the Misfit Covenant. That right there is where that scripture that was used to, to signify that covenant in the Old Testament was a scripture that you could go down and buy this medallion and it was broken in a piece to where the, one, the man would get one and the woman would get one. And then they would go off to war. And the medallion was talking about that when they went away that they would be secured and they would be safe till God came and put us back together again. Here's the, here's the thing in that. It's scripture. It is correct. But when you start to think that, that medallion has power and protective power, that's the same thing as what they do. And that's the same thing that people in churches do as well. That cross, those kind, there's nothing wrong with those there. But when you start to assign something to that and make that there's some strength in that, you're doing the same thing as the heathen does. And, and it's the same thing as a superstition. And it's in church. So I got to have it. I got to have it. I've had people, I've had people show me their St. Christopher. That would be in their wallet. Said, I got to have my St. Christopher wherever I go. My mama, is everybody doing all right? Is this my last service here? Why y'all looking at me like that? They're looking at me like this is my last service. I'm just in flip-flops, everybody. I left my shoes at home. Y'all don't think I've lost my head, do you? Yeah, I mean, it might look like it, me coming in here with my flip-flops on, but I've just been up since 3 in the morning. Somebody shout amen. It's just been a long day, everybody. So when you start giving strength and life to the misfit covenant, this medallion, I'd love to have one of them. You know, these kind of things that the Lord protect you while, it's in the scriptures, the Lord protect you while we are apart from each other. And that God would watch over you as he watches over me, and we made a covenant together. See what I mean? Of love. And you see, they took that medallion and made millions. And you can still buy these today. But when you give strength to that medallion as something, there's no difference to what they do, and it's a Christian thing. Does that make sense? It's a superstition. Somebody say, he's talking about superstitions now. Now, what? here's the thing, is that there are people who are in church who believe in these things, and they're in bondage. That's the key. They're in bondage to this stuff. And we're crazy and they're in bondage. So God mocks those who trust in astrology. And here you've got to be careful with astrology that you wear a certain, you, you say that you're born on a certain sign. And that when you're born on, say, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same thing. They wear certain colors. You have a certain birth color stone. 
This is my birthstone. This is what I'm born under. This is my color. I'm going, who assigned that to you? You mean some Zodiac did? They assigned that to you? See what I'm getting at? And when you start saying, well, I got to have these and oh, I got to have mine. This is this because and now you're starting to chart that out because this is what I, I'm, I'm just saying where and, and, and let's talk about having luck. I mean, we talk about having good luck. We're talking about here's what here's the way I understand the good luck was supposed to be of the rabbit. The rabbit had to be shot in a cemetery. On a full moon. And you had to cut his back left foot off. And then that was the good luck. That would follow with the rabbit's foot. So I mean there's more to it than just a rabbit's foot. I mean this thing here really gets. Full moon. I believe it was a cemetery. Had to be shot and you take the left foot off of it. And that was the good luck for the rabbit's foot. And they made a fortune out of all of these. Or is it good luck or is it just very bad habit? You know habits. Or another area, that's the same thing as superstitions. A habit. You know, when we talk about, remember last week we talked about the heart, the hat. The hat that would be put on a bed. Hello, everybody. Anybody go look that up? I think I told some people about it. The hat that was supposed to be on the bed was that when people came into their house and they would take their cloak off and they would take their hat and they would take it and they would put it on the guest bed, their hat. People would freak out to find out that their hat was on the bed or something. What did you put the hat on the bed for? So they believed that the static electricity that was in the hair causing the, sh the pop, the, the stuff moving around with static were demons. And then what would happen is that if you got in bed where that hat was at and got in there and all of a sudden you found lice, that they, they equated that the hat, and it was from the hair, the lice, and all of this taking place. Now, here's the thing, is that you don't think that that has any power to it. Or they would think that, that here's what they thought, that when they took the hat off, the demons that were in the head, their head, come off with the hat, and it would be in the bed. And that when you got in bed, you'd get in bed with what? Now, y'all think that that's not real. See, it's almost, it's almost like you're saying, I don't believe in this. And we know that demons can be transferred with objects. Especially when you start believing in them. They gain power. Because you, when you start expecting something, that's where it's at. And that's where they gain their power at. Does that make sense? You're going to have to get from this idea that demons are, that demons, they are real. You're going to have to really grasp in this last day that there are fallen angels. And they're probably right up there. Assigned over this place. To stop us from doing what we're doing. It's real. You, got to, you don't have to think about it. And you don't have to look at the four corners of this property. That there are really entities that want to get in here. And you have to come to the realization that you probably got some of them yourself. Me too. And about 3.30 in the morning, I felt like I did. Somebody, especially when I went to put my britches on today and then they have no shoes. I know I look like I did. Huh? So you have to realize that if we're going to live free, we're going to live free from superstition. But the thing is, you can't live free from superstitions until, first of all, the superstitions are identified to you. See, if you, if I, you don't let me take the time to identify the superstitions, then you'll, they'll hide. They'll, he didn't say anything about this. He didn't say anything about that. He didn't say that it must be all right. So, I mean, we're talking about things that go all the way down to where you do things in your home. I mean, when they come in and they, they light candles in rooms, they take money. And they sprinkle money in the corners of their house or they go in and take a light and, you know, they're, they're believing they're warding off evil spirits or we have housewarming parties. Because we don't want to have bad luck in our house. We want to make it this. See, when you start to tag these things and there's nothing wrong with having a housewarming party. But why are you doing it? You see, it's the why part. 
Well, I know I stirred that demon up tonight. I know I did. You see what I'm getting at? It's the, why are we doing it? That's the part. And when that's what God's trying to say is that, and the thing is, is that someone say, you're carrying this stuff too far. Well, how far do you go before you want to be free? What you say if your superstition is the tie to your cancer? The superstition is the tie to your depression. Your superstition is the tie to whatever. You can't get free. That's just, that, and that's what it is. And there are a lot of things. I know this is crazy stuff, isn't it? Everybody. Somebody say, this is crazy. Crazy stuff, isn't it? I mean, when Muslims go all the way to Mecca and they walk around that, I mean, if I was going to go walk around a stone, I'd walk around it in a certain direction. They absolutely walk around it in the wrong direction to me. But they walk around it in a direction that the cosmos is going around the sun. And they know the direction that everything is going. It's, 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 you know, they're walking around that direction. They're walking in a certain direction for a purpose. If they walk around the stone in the wrong direction, it will be bad luck. So that everything that they're doing in this here, walking around that cube, does certain things. Amen? Even taking a bottle and christening a ship for what purpose? To bless it. It's this mating voyage. Breaking that. See what I'm getting at? So when we look at these things, smashing that bottle of bubbly across the bowels, pronouncing a blessing with the, with, uh, those are some of the things that the, the different tribes would do, breaking things like that. I christen this the SS Titanic. May God bless her all the way that she would sail. Psh! I didn't get far, very far, did it? Almost sounds to me like it was a what? Everybody say so here's what they have to have. You have to have a, a checkup. You have to have a checkup. You have to have a cleansing yourself. So do a self-check. Now, the thing is, you're going to do the self-check yourself. But the thing is, the purpose of this here is to teach you so that you can teach others. And once you get down to the point to where you say you're carrying... See, with superstitions, it can be in every area of your life, in everything. That makes sense? I mean, here's one thing that we do at work. They may steal, but we ain't going to steal a man's tools. There are, there are certain things that you say we're not going to do. Because stealing a man's tools is his what? That's his life. See what I'm getting at? Now, you can say that with all sincerity that you're not going to do that. But if you say that, with the superstition that something bad's going to happen to you. See what I'm getting at? That's where you fall into the, 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 the reality that you're allowing a spirit to control you because you are afraid of something happening. So what you've got to do is have a, clean, a cleansing. So you've got to get rid of all idols. You know that people, when I mean, you go through your house and you start looking at the idols. Now we're back to the superstitions again. What are the things that you're superstitious of? Lucky charms, crosses. Remember what I'm saying about the crosses? I got a cross. I use that cross to jab that devil when we get ready to cast them out. They hate the cross. See, they hate the cross. And if they can get that cross connected to you and get a spirit tied behind that cross, when you, take, when you put that necklace on, you got them all around your neck. I got to get my demon cross. You take it right here with superstition right here. Now, I'm not saying get rid of them. Please don't get rid of them. Just pray over them and get this right. You ain't got to get rid of anything. You get your attitude right, get that, making sure that it has nothing over you. Amen? So, repent of trusting in fate. So, I got I to repent of trusting in fate. You know, like, remember again last week I told you about sneezing? I don't think I've had nobody say, God bless you. Making you think that if your heart continued on, then you were lucky. We're real lucky because your heart didn't stop. That's what they did that for. 
That makes sense? Or your destiny. Luck is a sin. To call yourself karma, the word karma should not come out of a Christian's mouth. And what's that one? What's that one that uh, karma, karma, bad karma? I mean, you see all the stuff on TV about bad karma. That stuff right there is nothing more than just indoctrinating this culture with that superstitious belief that comes from Hinduism and things like that. What's that one? That, it's about car, the credit. Karma credit, is that it? Credit karma, that's it. I'm not calling credit karma, I can tell you that. No, no, y'all call them if you want. I'm not calling credit karma. They need to change their name. You need to call them and say, you need to change the name. I mean, I mean it's, like, it's like this here. It's like there are, there are cities around us that when you drive into the city up on the, up on the water tower has their mascot that's over their city. They have made that, their, that is pretty much their mascot. Does that make sense? And some of these mascots, they're pretty bad. They want to know why, they're, why is their community not prospering. Man, it's under the sign of the devil. You got him lifted up on a pole. That's, see, that's, you got to get, get into this thing here. You don't really, you really don't see it. People really don't see it. Until you start to deal with what we deal with. And the very ones that say, why is that up there on that water tower? I could really, see, if I, if I say this, if I say it, then I, I, I excommunicate myself from that whole group. Does that make sense? So whatever's on your water tower, mascot, you need to look at it. Somebody shout amen. So when you start putting your trust, luck is sin. You've got to put your whole heart and the whole trust in Jesus. That looks like something that was, that was, that right there is what was on that water tower. What he just saw up there. That was on the water tower over the community. Right there. And go want to know why the community is not prospering. Is that hard to see? I mean, of, oh. Right. It's an idol. Is what it is. And they leave themselves and opens themselves to bondage. So, listen, here's what Christians need to do. We do not worship crosses. We revere the cross, but we don't worship cross. It's the cross that defeated the enemy. And all the enemy wants to do is to pervert the very thing that defeated him. And if he can pervert the very thing that defeated him and get you into bondage with it, then he'll, he'll pervert anything. Does that make sense, what we're talking about? You can take a piece of wood... You could take a, tree, a, wooden, a wooden cross and still do the same thing. You can put it, you can, it depends on why are you putting that around your house? Why? What's the purpose of this here? If you're, if you're signifying it for what's your purpose, then you need to work that out between you and God. So when you look at a lot of these different things, you realize that are you trusting in fate or are you, looking, are you trusting in luck? And that's what, when we start to work with this again with these people, and they start asking about the occult, you need to pry. You need to pry. You need to ask. Because the enemy is not going to come forth with. He's not going to come forth with and tell you anything about this. He's going to hide. Just as if he can hide behind the things I've talked to you about uh, as well. And that's all he wants to do is hide. He can hide. He can have power. of uh, Going into... Going... Leaving a... Leaving a building, come in the door, you come in that door, guess which door many people who are superstitious have to go out? Got to go out the same door. I ain't going out another door. You go in this room, this door here, they ain't going out that door, and they ain't going out that door, and they ain't going out that door. They're going out that door. And those people are in the church. So they're in bondage to superstition. The thing is, though, that superstition is real. And that superstition has given demons power over them. They're fearful. Spirit of fear, whatever it is. The spirit of superstition, that could be called that. Whatever's behind it, you've got to get that thing. And this is the cleansing that God wants his people to be. Can you, not, can you imagine how we sound and we look to the world with these crazy things going on? Now, can you imagine how crazy I sound in Christian churches listening to this? I'm absolutely, this is too far out there for a lot of people. 
That makes sense? But God doesn't play. When he talks about all these things, when, I mean, when he talked about putting one to death who read palms and they got a sign down the road, boy, I'm telling you what they'd have done back then. If they were doing that, they'd be doing it in the woods. They sure would be having a sign that was $400 a month on the north, south, east, and west of this city drawing people to them. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we got to cut it out all the way. So, here's what he says in um, Deuteronomy 8. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do them, that ye may live, and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way. Someone say, all the way. All the way. Which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years into the wilderness. To humble thee and to prove thee to know what's in your heart. Whether thou would keep his commandments or not. So if I get to say, I don't believe in that. That's okay. And at that point to where you say, I just don't believe in this anymore. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of one. I mean, there's a lot of people who say, I just don't believe in this. And that's okay. This is as far as you can go with God. This is as far as you go with him. You don't go any further. Why should, he, why, why should he give you more when you say, well, I'm, God hasn't showed me that. I will put that on the back burner. I'm going, what do you mean God hasn't showed you that? He just spent 45 minutes telling me to tell you. He hasn't showed you that. He just spent 45 minutes giving it to me to tell you. And... So what happens is that we close our ears, close our eyes, and we don't want to hear what God has to say. I'm actually kind of a, I'm kind of actually, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Lord, show me. Just do this way here. Y'all ready? Say, Lord, show me things that you're not pleased with. You ever pray? I just say, Lord, you don't have to beat me. You don't have to chastise me. All you have to do is just show me. And I'll walk in them. I'll change. That's all you got to do. And when you approach him with that kind of a heart, in a heart of humility, then that's, that's simple. And it's not a matter. So, so let's do what I say. Say, if I have a spirit, a superstition in me, I command that spirit of superstition to manifest itself. Come up and come out of me now. I don't want you no more. Get out. Get out of me now. You've been revealed. And you renounce that thing. What he's got you doing. You have to renounce that. And I know that there's things that tries to come to my mind. When I'm working and doing stuff. And when you do something that you've been taught again, like, the, like those monks. They can't walk past it <laughs> because there's a, <clears throat> what is it? And that's it. They can't get past it. And a lot of people can't get past this until they renounce it and get rid of it in Jesus' name. And there's going to be people that's going to come this weekend. And so here's what we're expecting. When you take these people through deliverance, I'm not saying pull out a list, but you just need to ask, hey, have you, are have you ever been superstitious? What's the superstitious things that's in your life? So let's renounce that. And we will renounce it and say, if there's any spirit that's tied to this, there's any open door, any occult involvement, any sickness that's been associated with this, and we want it to come out in the name of Jesus. Because see, a lot of people, so what we're talking about here is that if we want people to come here to get healed and get set free, then sometimes people aren't going to get healed because we haven't dealt with superstitions. See what I'm getting at? And we think that's something they just got to walk out. It's just something that they got to live through. It's just, you see what I'm getting at? But you have to address the root of what's going on in their life, and then you can be set free as well. I think I used enough Bible in this, didn't I? I think I did all right. I mean, with using the Bible in, in that, tying it together in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Why don't you stand with me? Father, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for revelation of your word. Father, help us to 
identify superstitions. Father, you know the enemy is so clever. He's so clever, Father. And he'll hide behind charms and amulets. He'll, he'll hide behind things that, that we're not even aware of. And it takes the Holy Ghost to show us. Father, we pray that the light of your word and revelation of the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts, speak to our life, and reveal the things that are not pleasing to you. And Lord, that we might walk in all holiness and purity before you. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do with these, your people. And Father, as we get ready for the deliverance session coming up, Lord, we pray that you use every one of these people here to help set others free. May we be salt, may we be light, and actually go out and share the truth of Jesus Christ to this world. Well, thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. for. Oh, let's bring the offering plate on up here. We don't want to get out of here without during the offering. Let me pray over it. Father, bless the offering. Multiply it. Thank you for what you're going to do with it. We thank you for it. In the name of your son, Jesus.